Welcome to Multimodal 2021. I'm here with Robert Keane, the Director General of uh, BIFA, the Ford Association in the UK. Hello, Bob. Oh, can I call you Robert or Bob? Yeah, call me Robert. Call me okay. Robert. Yeah. BIFA's training activities have expanded significantly over the last three years. Why is that? Mm. And where is the Trade Association headed in regards to training and personnel development? Well, um, I had a great deal of luck. I always thought that if I got it right it would just be a question of um, trying to keep up with the snowball rolling downhill. Um, we were subcontracting out our training and I bought the intellectual property right off of the trainer, took it in house. Um, we were very lucky again because um, a group of members wanted us to develop an apprenticeship uh, which we, we were able to use our, the base of our training programme to create the apprenticeship. We then started getting apprentices in. We were then, um, more, the more training we did, the more we had to hire one trainer, two trainers. Um, then we had the pandemic, so um, we had to convert everything to online training. Um, we had Brexit coming along with customs or the government making grants available for people to train and people came to us for training. So it's just a success breeds success, really. Okay. Um... So there's still a, a great fervour for young people to get into the freight forwarding industry? Yeah, we're boosting it. We're trying our hardest to um, make it a career that's more attractive. Um, everybody you've talked to says they fell into freight forwarding by accident. There was no other, they didn't know what the career choices were. They either lived next to an airport or a port, so they drifted into it. But um, one of our big goals is to get into schools and try and boost it more as a career. And of course, with the, again the pandemic, the spotlight on logistics recently, um, it is now something that is uh, seen as a career as opposed to just something people do that couldn't do anything else. So you're meeting the need to inspire the next generation of talent to join the sector, and that's the prerogative of BIFA. Um, and how is this being done exactly? You've mentioned it a little bit there, but how are you kind of inspiring and drawing them in for our industry? Okay. Well, um, <clears throat> again, the apprenticeship does give us a great uh, base to build from because the youngsters that come into it, um, so we created a, a Young Forwarder Forum to try and give them a network amongst themselves, try and give them industry uh, development talks and career talks. Um, so now we, we get you know, it's anywhere from 60 to 100 youngsters tuning in every other week for two hours on a Wednesday. Um, again, we're going to schools, fairs to try and um, build the brand, which was something that wasn't really done. Obviously, we can't get to every school in the country, so we're now really pushing the members to actually put their backs into helping to build the next generation through so we do need support of the members themselves. So you're looking for the local freight forwarder to get into the community yeah. to show the youngsters that there is yeah. great job prospects. Get, get into forward. schools nights, um, talk about the career that's available and demonstrate. Um, we've only got you know, limited resources to, there's only a small secretariat so we need to work through the members to get into the schools. Okay that's good. Uh, BIFA's Young Forwarder Network was set up to help those new to the industry who are keen to develop their knowledge and professional skills in a more social networking environment. Has that been a success and what are BIFA's plans for it? Well, the only problem we've got is what we do when they, what we're going to do with them when they grow up. Um, we'll probably have to have an older forwarders network of some sort, but um, we're finding some of the older forwarders are coming in because they, they like what their youngsters are getting out of it every week. A um, good example was uh, a virtual port tour. Um, one of our youngsters over at London Gateway um, went around the port with a handheld phone talking about it, um, broadcasting to, I think we had about 110 people online that day. Um, none of them who'd been anywhere near a port had no idea about the size of the cranes and the ships. and. Um, we found we had a few older forwarders on that one as well, but uh, and they, they manage themselves. The, the, you know, the, the, we've set it up, but we actually have a committee of youngsters who actually we give them the responsibility of driving it. 
We've seen some of the challenges in the UK supply chain and elsewhere in, in Europe. Do you think that the highlighting of the important role of logistics and freight forwarding uh, to certain for e-commerce and how goods actually arrive on the table or in the shelves, do you think that will help inspire youngsters want to get into this high-tech yeah. industry? Well, we're in the spot. We have been in the spotlight recently. Of course, it's shifted to HGV drivers at the moment, but generally with uh, the classification of logistics workers as key workers at the time when NHS workers were key workers actually began to raise the profile. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's getting there. It's early days yet, but um, more and more people. And it's also good with, um, the good thing about it is, I have to, I've almost forgot this, is the, the gender ratio. We've got over 40% of our apprentices that are coming through are female. So for a real male middle-aged industry of a few years ago it really is revitalizing so it's become uh, more women are getting into the industry but also youngsters now see that it's it's high tech you know you're going around a port with a scanner it, it's yep. that sort of kind of things that will attract youngsters into yep. freight forwarding and they're developing um, a network which uh, if i turn the clock back 50 years to when i started um, you know, it was a, I was one of a group of youngsters who used to run around the airport uh, delivering documents, messages, and that network of friends that I had then 50 years ago, as we all became clerks, managers, etc., some people started their own companies, that network really saw me through. And we're, we're actually giving these people a network of youngsters in the industry, we're giving them inspiration and also uh, business skills. Yeah, people tend to stay in the freight industry when they join it and so their cohorts will be progressing through the management chain and they've got friends but also colleagues to help them progress. Yeah, that, that has always been the case. Obviously in, in wider industry people will now pop around for different firms and different industries and if you get five years out of somebody they can then switch things. Certainly in the logistics industry it does seem that people stay there at the moment. Okay, that's great. Now, in 2017 at Multimodal, you used a crystal ball as a prop to illustrate how little anyone understood about the post-Brexit future. As we approach 2022, in light of what has gone on since 2017, uh, is that crystal ball any clearer? <laughs> Cloudy as ever. I mean. <laughs> Who could have seen we'd end up where we are now? I certainly, we always knew Brexit was going to be tough. Um, it, we were sort of saying to the saying the message that you know it is going to get tougher. There are going to be custom entries. Unfortunately, the narrative from perhaps the mainstream media and the government was, "Don't worry, we're going to get a deal," and people thought things would stay the same. We knew there'd need to be a massive expansion. Um, you know, our members are rushed off their feet at the moment. They've got the same sort of skill shortages that uh, other people have got. Um, they've got more work than they can cope with at the moment. Well, I shouldn't say that because they always cope. Um, but uh, it's a tough act at the moment. And uh, I don't think we could have foreseen how. We knew it was going to be tough, but I don't think we knew it was going to be this tough. But freight forwarders can handle this. They've well, challenges before. It's in their DNA, isn't it? Yeah, they're. they're they're very practical, resourceful people. You know, they have, you know, the survivors who find their way around problems, and you know, they, they think on their feet. So yeah, they're doing doing what they've always done. Solution solvers. Mm. They find see a problem, find a solution, and mm. solve it. Yeah. Then they get paid. <laughs> Thanks, Robert, for joining us today at Multimodal 2021, and I look forward to seeing you again next year in Multimodal 2022. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to be here. Thank you.